So I think you you pretty uh, effectively led us into our next our next major topic, which is communication and transparency, right? And that's another one that if you look at what's important to millennials, definitely transparency and communication are high on the list. But again, that's an area that really is good for everybody. Um, so what what about the transparency do you think, Annie, is is so important? I think there are a couple of factors. I think first, as we discussed before, millennials expect and like to receive feedback, and that's not always just positive feedback, although sometimes that's what we get a rap for. Um, <laughs> we do like that too. But um, getting the feedback and getting the structure and managing expectations. And then I think secondly, in an era where um, so much of what's going on in the workplace is being exposed through litigation, like lawsuits about gender pay equity, um, lawsuits about racial equity, um, sexual harassment, and everything like that. Millennials just want more transparency. This is what I'm doing, and why is it having the impact that it is in the workplace? We want the communication to understand why am I moving up when I am, why am I not moving up, and that transparency, I think, is really rooted in a sense of fairness. Millennials are not the generation that believes that if I just put my nose down to the grindstone and I work really hard, then I'm going to get what I deserve. We, Like you mentioned, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, we believe that if you work hard in a small period of time, you should be able to skyrocket and advance past everyone else. If you have an idea that's worth listening to, then you should be heard. And so I think that communication and transparency really lends itself to that sense of fairness. I think the other thing that employers are seeing with respect to this now, in light of a lot of what's going on with sexual harassment and Me Too, is that employers, many employers, have enacted arbitration clauses, non-disclosure agreements as part of their typical onboarding with their employees. And you have seen recently, you know, sort of these protests and these rise, you know, a, there was a big protest at Google. There have been some protests at other tech companies. Some of the law students now are protesting law firms that have enacted what they feel to be very um, rigid arbitration clauses. And I think that stems directly from this idea of millennials wanting transparency in their workplace and they want to know what's going on. Um, so I think it's something for employers to think about. If you have a large millennial workforce, is this something that, you know, it may be great from a legal perspective to protect the company. And I think as lawyers, we see some of the benefits of arbitration and in mediation, particularly in delicate employment matters. Um, but is that something that's going to help with your talent and the workforce that you have? And so I think that's kind of a, a dead on explanation of what millennials are doing to encourage companies to be more transparent in their workplaces. Yeah, the transparency issue has really emerged as one of the one of the most challenging issues I think for a lot of employers in uh, you know the last six months or so because you do have this tension between a strong desire for transparency um, on one hand, but on the other hand, you know, in a sexual harassment investigation, for example, you know, you want to be you want to have some level of transparency with the person who's making the accusations, but on the other hand, you have certain obligations, legal obligations too, to protect protect the privacy interests of somebody who's accused, um, and to find your way through that. And it can be a very, very challenging uh, situation to deal with. But definitely transparency um, is something that seems to be on the rise at, at many different companies. So as far as the communication goes, um, you know, I think that's, an, that's another interesting issue. There was an HR um, magazine poll I saw that said that, um, Millennials want to hear, 60% uh, of millennials wanted to hear from managers at least once a day. Um, and I think some people who probably are in management positions think, oh my goodness, <laughs> how am I ever going to be able to communicate with, uh, with everybody at least once a day? Um, but I also think, you know, on that, on that communication topic, um, you know, there's a, there's definitely can be a difference in in part because some of the technology between the way that different generations view communications. And I know Annie, you and I have have talked about this in the past, where you know, given given the immediate and transparent response that you get from a lot of different uh, technology sources and communication devices, there's an expectation from millennials that if I send something. I will hear something back and I'll hear something back promptly because that's what I'm used to the way I was raised. And 
for some of the older generations, it's not quite like that. Um, you know, we didn't have, I didn't grow up using, using certain communication devices, and I may respond to something if I feel like somebody's asking me a question, but otherwise, I just, it hasn't been ingrained in me to respond to some, you know, to every communication that I get, which if you're not communicating well and having that transparency and open communication about expectations can lead to misunderstandings. Um, so important to have that kind of dialogue um, and be clear about when feedback is being provided. Yeah, definitely. I think that millennials sometimes when, especially um, with the idea that when we voice ideas, we want to be heard, when we send a message to a manager or a supervisor or something that sometimes millennials believes contains an idea and might believe that it warrants a response, but the manager or supervisor doesn't, then that might lead again to that ambiguity that millennials are sort of known to sort of fear, which is like, what is my manager thinking? Like, oh my gosh, did I do something wrong? Did I step on someone's toes? Should I not have sent that? When really the manager most likely read it and thought, okay, great, I'll talk to them next time I see them, which probably won't be today. So. Right, or the manager hasn't read it at all. And I think that technology does not help us in this space, right? Like. You have read receipts on email, so you can track whether or not someone has read something. You can see the three dots pop up on your phone when someone's responding. And if you send a text message and you see the three dots and then they go away and you don't get anything, you think to yourself, well, what, you know, what's going on with that? Or, you know, if you have IM, it tells you when someone has read your instant message. And so, you know, I think sometimes that doesn't, technology does not do us any favors in dealing with, um, uh, you know, millennials who want sort of this instantaneous feedback because then it even alerts you that we've read it and haven't responded to you, which I think sometimes is worse than, you know, you thinking that it hasn't been read. <laughs>